My name is Jeff Cutler. I'm a principal at Space to Place. We're landscape architects here in Vancouver. Uh, and this is Garden City Park, a uh, play environment in Richmond, British Columbia. Uh, this project is a really interesting project in that uh, it's actually the first playground that we've ever designed. Uh, but prior to that, we did do a lot of work uh, in children's play environments. When we were actually asked to issue a proposal for this project, uh, we were the only firm to propose working with children. Uh, prior to that, a lot of uh, playgrounds in particular uh, consulted parents, but not the children. And uh, our, from our experience working with youth, that, that we knew we were going to get a lot more interesting material to work with and a lot more creative ideas if we worked with children. Uh, and it actually, I think, was really one of the key elements to the success of this project. The children's workshops in this project were a really uh, key fundamental part to really help to sell the project to uh, uh, decision makers and city councils and we went to there. The fact that we consulted with children and we're really trying to do something different really uh, helped to get other people on board and really kind of accept that we were doing something non-traditional but really doing something that really helped to support what uh, children are interested in. One of the key fundamental uh, elements to this project is that uh, children's playgrounds over the last 15 to 20 years have really uh, become quite sterile and formulaic. Uh, and a lot of that is due to safety concerns. Um, and we really thought there was an opportunity here to do something different, to really design a place that was more experiential, that was really more unique to this place, uh, and really uh, treat it with the respect and uh, consideration that we would any other public space. Really, it's uh, it's not really a playground, we call it a play environment. It's really more of a park that's designed for children, uh, but at the same time, it's important to design spaces for parents and caregivers, and you know, it's a, just a good place to be, which you can't really say that for all uh, playgrounds and, and, and play environments. One of the key aspects to this was really looking at ways we could bring uh, children to have a better experience with nature. Uh, so introducing water into the site, uh, introducing these uh, reclaimed uh, cedar logs, the one right behind me is a good example of that. Uh, and as well, having planting quite integrated into the park as well is really uh, something that I think really led to the, to the success. And, uh, um, you know, we've been really happy with the way this, this project's turned out. The uh, water is a really key organizing element for this park and, uh, you know, why don't we take the opportunity to go and have a look at uh, some of the uh, key components to it. It, uh, it changes as you move through the site. The water element in the park is actually quite a simple feature. It's just uh, one water source with a water channel that uh, drains out into the lake. Uh, it's, uh, it starts at the water source here, which comes out of uh, this uh, basalt stone uh, and is activated by the, uh, the water on the post there. And what it does is then it, uh, it's integrated into the top of the mound, which is one of the high points in the site. And it's all feeds by gravity out to the existing stormwater pond uh, within the site here and goes through a number of different experiences uh, on the site. It's at the top here, it's really more of a constructed channel uh, and has an opportunity for children to float things down it and kind of run along both sides. Then it goes to uh, this weir structure that uh, captures the water in behind it and allows for actually quite large volumes to flush the channel out uh, and create a whole different experience for the children. Uh, and then the third part of the water channel is that it reaches uh, an area that we've ended up calling the mud flats. It's really uh, 
causes children and, uh, to, to work together and uh, is actually one of the really kind of social components to the park. Uh, the way that the water works is that, you know, by having the weir, it can keep the water uh, dammed up and not flowing through the channel so that children downstream can build dams or interrupt it and so they really have to work together to make it function so we often find that children that come to the park that don't know each other actually end up having to make friends just having to work together the way they organize the uh, the way the water functions and uh, and flows throughout the park. The yellow poles behind me, they're uh, gateway elements that came directly out of the workshops that we had with children and really what we saw when the children produced models was they had uh, gateways around the surrounding of the, the place that they developed and really kind of identifying where their place is and so claiming, uh, claiming their space and we thought that was really interesting and a lot of times there would be numerous gateways. Uh, within the designs that they had. Uh, so on this project we uh, actually have two gateway elements. We have the yellow poles behind us, which are kind of a fun thing that really change dynamically as you move through the space. Uh, the other gateway we have are these uh, red poles, which has now been called the licorice forest. One of the key elements to really good play space design is having opportunities for challenge. And uh, so one of the uh, fun elements that we have in this project that's a bit unique is this uh, concrete dome here that we call the mountain. Uh, it's about five feet high and it's actually quite a challenge to get to the top and it's something that often children like to, to try and do. It's actually polished smooth so it's quite uh, smooth to slide down. Uh, and then something that also is complementary to that is the element we call the valley, which is uh, just a dish, a concrete dish, which is just sits right beside it and complements it. So this project was a really challenging project for us, but I think a really rewarding project at the same time. Uh, like I said, this was actually the first playground that we had done before, but a lot of the experience that we had as landscape architects that we brought to this really enabled us to provide, a, I think, a quite an interesting and diverse experience. Uh, and it really started from really looking at what does this site have to offer, because every place is unique and, you know, increasingly we're seeing designs that are more formulaic and just applied from one place to the other without any really distinguishing features from one, uh, one site to another site. And we really think that good design starts from understanding the place that you're working in and how can something grow out of that. Mark Vanderzam. I'm a landscape architect here in Vancouver and um, today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about this project, the Vancouver Skate Plaza, and a little bit about how it came to be developed and, um, and uh, how we were involved in the design development and construction of this unique project. For me, um, I really wanted to focus the work that I did and the work that my firm did on public projects and projects that really impacted the largest amount of people possible. And so uh, when I was working for other firms I was always looking for that opportunity to get involved in playgrounds or public parks or plazas. An opportunity came up with the City of Vancouver to look at 
This site here, um, which is essentially a traffic island on Main and Expo, we were asked to look at how we could turn it into a temporary skateboard park. And so that was a, a challenge from a number of different perspectives. One, they really didn't want to spend a fortune on the park knowing that it was temporary. And two, um, we had to develop something really useful, fun and exciting uh, because we really wanted to do a great job with a small budget. Um, and we had to do that in a sort of short timeline. So um, we got involved with the City of Vancouver and the, uh, the Vancouver Parks Board in particular was our client on this project. Uh, the land here is owned by uh, engineering. So there was a, an access agreement put together to allow us to develop a temporary park facility here uh, for two years. And we started to engage local skateboarders and residents here at City Gate Towers behind us um, in the whole dialogue about what a skateboard park would be, um, what it would mean for residents in terms of noise and youth congregating, and for skaters and skateboard park enthusiasts, what the terrain would be for them and how it would be different from any other skateboard park in the city. What came about from those meetings in, at the Roundhouse Community Center talking to skateboarders and, and residents alike was that there was kind of a fear of the unknown uh, from uh, residents nearby about what it would mean to have skateboarders here at all hours of the day because it's an urban environment with lighting underneath the, uh, the Georgia Viaduct here. So people can actually use it for a fairly significant length of the day. Um, and so after a series of meetings, we got to some consensus that skateboarders would be respectful of people who live nearby and, and the Vancouver Skate Coalition was very instrumental in passing that message to residents. And then in working with the coalition and skateboarders alike, we really wanted to develop something completely unique for skateboarders and that was the Vancouver Skate Plaza. At the time of the design development for the skate plaza, there were no skateboard parks that were plaza style in the world. There were plazas, public spaces that were used for skateboarding and that were heralded in skate magazines um, all over the world for their unique skateability in terms of, you know, Barcelona public spaces with uh, lots of open space and granite and um, uh, different places in the south of France and of course Embarcadero, Pier in San Francisco. All of these public spaces that were great for skateboarders but were being shut down because people were getting into conflicts with people recreating in public spaces. So we wanted to create a plaza style development here that would mimic those spaces on a shoestring budget. There's Terrain in this park that it completely mimics spaces in Vancouver, like um, the CIBC handrail um, that's on Burrard Street, um, Burrard and Hastings, where um, that particular skate spot was shut down by security and cap. That's what skateboarders call when you put little knobs on everything and make it unskatable. Um, but it was a loved spot, it was a highly photographed spot, and it was a spot that was known throughout North America as a perfect rail. So skateboarders would come here and get film and, and other footage of them skating that rail. And when it was capped, it was a big loss to local skateboarders. So we replicated that um, rail in the park to exact dimensions of the CIBC rail. Um, and that was just one particular detail that we tried to recreate. Other elements in the park include Pier 7 manual pads, which are sort of short concrete elements uh, that mimic uh, Pier 7 in San Francisco. Uh, what was really unique about the process of engaging skateboarders in the design was they're very articulate about what they really want to skate. Skateboarders tend to uh, experience their urban surroundings in a different way than an average pedestrian. We find that uh, skateboarders will skate through the urban environment or walk through the urban environment or drive through the environment looking for opportunities to skate. We were able to get granite cheap and use that to cap various ledges in the park and make them uh, just that much more special. There was no granite in any skateboard parks in Vancouver. 
let alone Western Canada, and it was very unusual anywhere in the Pacific Northwest to find granite. So that was really unique here and was really good bragging rights for Vancouver skateboarders. Another aspect of the process that was really important to us was making sure that the construction of the park came off really well. And um, that was really, really helped by the fact that we pre-qualified contractors and we were able to work with a team called New Line Skate Parks. And New Line is well known in the skateboarding community as uh, users and as advocates uh, for skateboarding. Uh, and they also run a fairly significant company that employs skateboarders for construction and design. So we worked with New Line Skate Parks to make sure that this park was designed and built to exacting standards. The Skate Plaza really started something, not only here in Vancouver, but beyond. Um, there was a big um, uh, hoopla about the opening of the uh, DC Skate Plaza in Kettering, Ohio, about a year after this opened, and that was heralded um, at the opening as the first skate plaza in the world. And that was corrected after skateboarders basically let everybody know that, hey, no, Vancouver was first, it was here. Based upon this work, we've had clients from uh, Europe come and see the skate plaza and see what a space could be and it's really energized people. Skateboarders ultimately like to skate the urban environment and that'll never go away. So we tried to create that opportunity by putting in real granite uh, uh, ledge, ledges. Um, essentially these are just three 75 mil granite pieces that were taken from the Slam City Jam uh, event at BC Place and installed here. And you can see how this has been waxed. Skateboarders will put wax on this edge and then they'll grind it so it's nice and smooth. The granite is very hard and so it maintains its integrity a lot longer. If this was concrete, it'd be completely eaten alive uh, by now after 10 years of use. But because it's granite, it stayed relatively firm. So this piece behind me here is um, is uh, what we call the big three. All the guys are sitting on the big three over there. Um, and that's a unique element, um, just a big sort of hangout space. It allows sort of some social space in the middle of the skate park, but it creates a real hub for people to be in the middle of the action, but not in the way. And that's an important part of the design so that users and, and people who maybe aren't skateboarding but want to hang out with their friends can be in the middle of the park without having to stay on the perimeter. Since um, the park has been such a big success for Parks Board, they were able to negotiate the unlimited, sort of the lifetime dedication of this space as a park. And it's no longer a temporary installation. It's now permanent. <laughs>